What up? In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this pop art portrait in Photoshop in a series I call Hidden, short for How I Did That. Explain non-violently. Step one, you want to find a portrait where the subject is looking at you head on like this. And then you want to make sure that the face of the subject is as straight vertically and horizontally as possible. Here's the way I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to view, new guide layout, and then I'm going to make sure that columns and rows is set to two with no gutter. Click OK. So now I have a vertical and horizontal guide. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to rotate this image so that it's as straight up and down as I can possibly get it, as symmetrical as possible. That seems okay. And I don't want any of this white space on the edge of my canvas. So I'm going to hold Alt and drag this out so that I can resize it to make sure that the photo fills up the entire canvas. And there we go. That's all the prep work. I'm going to hide the guides with Command semicolon. Step two, let's cut out the lower half of the face. So let's come in with the pen tool. You want to press P for the pen tool or it's over here on the left. You want to zoom in a reasonable amount and we're going to start at above the nose, just above the nose. When you draw with the pen tool, you want to look for points of inflection where the curvature changes directions. And then you want to look for the most extreme points. So over here on the ear, you can see that the curve goes outward and then comes back in. It's like a hill. You want to go to the topmost point of that hill and click and drag. And there's a point here where the curve changes. I'm going to draw another point there. And I'm just clicking and dragging to try and match up as close as possible. Now, wherever there's a corner in the curve, which is right here, you want to click and drag like usual, but you want to hold Option or Alt while still holding. And then you'll be able to change the direction of one side of the handles and not the other. So I'm just going to act like I'm continuing drawing down here. There's another point of inflection on this chin right here. It doesn't have to be perfect right now, but we're going to come back in and clean it up later. But for now, just get it as close as possible as you can. And we're just going to go around this guy's face and trace it. Again, holding the Alt button to change directions when there's a corner. And we're almost done. All right. Now I'm just going to go ahead and close the path here. And then we're going to use the pen tool and A, the direct selection tool, this white pointer. And we're going to come back in and, and click on some of these things that we think we can clean up a little bit and make a little more accurate. So I'm just going to do that um, here and there. And you can also click on the handle and move the handle itself. So let's go throughout and then just make sure that it's close as possible. It doesn't have to be completely perfect for this tutorial. So there, I think I got it somewhere that I like. We're going to go to paths in the layers panel, and then we're going to command click on this thumbnail, which basically just selects the path we just drew. We want to come back to layers, and then we want to hide this shape layer that we drew, and then click on the portrait layer, and then come down here with the circle inside the rectangle. It's an add layer mask icon. Let's click on that button and that'll mask it out for us. Now, in this image, there's a bit of blur already in the image itself. It's not super sharp. If your portrait looks good, cut out like this already, that's great. But mine, I want to adjust it a little bit. I'm going to click on this mask inside the portrait layer. I'm going to go to properties and then I'm going to click select and mask. So I'm going to feather this a little bit just to add a little bit of that blur back in to the edges, because if it is blurry, it's not going to have hard edges. That's the definition of blur. And then I might shift the edge in a little bit, um, add some contrast, just play around with some of these sliders to get it to a place where, where you like it. I'm pretty cool with that. So now let's go into Illustrator and draw those lines. All right, step three, we're going to draw those lines in Illustrator. So I'm in Illustrator right now. There's a few things we want to make sure we set up properly. I am using a 1080 by 1350 artboard because that's the size for Instagram graphics, but you could do whatever size you want. But for this exercise, we're just going to be using a grid. It might be good if you just copy my canvas size. OK, so we want to come up to view. We want to click show grid. That'll show us our grid. Click on view snap to grid. All right. Now with the line segment tool, which is nested inside the rectangle tool, let's click on line segment tool. Let's click on one of these darker lines and drag all the way across. 
And let's just make sure that the stroke is 18. And let's make sure it's aligned properly. So let's click with the direct selection tool. Let's click and drag this onto one of these darker lines. Okay. All right. So we chose 18 point because that's going to take up two rows of this grid. Okay. So what that allows us to do is it allows us to duplicate this stroke and have it butt up to the other one perfectly without any space in between. That's what we're going to be doing. Okay. So in order to duplicate this, let's option click option or alt click drag down. And then let's click on the second line that we just created. Let's make the stroke color white. And then let's click and drag to select both of these strokes. Option click, drag it down so that it's lined up perfectly. And with those two new lines selected, let's press Command D a bunch of times. Now if you zoom out, we'll just be filling the canvas with these alternating black and white lines. And I want these lines to be a little longer. So what I'm going to do is select all of them. Number one, I want to make sure they're aligned properly to the canvas here, which they are almost. Yep, they are now. And then I'm going to option click and drag again to duplicate it and line it up like so. So now we have a bunch of really long repeating lines that are perfectly straight. Now we need these. We're going to save these for later. We're going to come down and make some curved lines now. So let's select all of them again. Let's click and drag, option, click and drag, and that'll duplicate them all. Let's delete all of them except one. So we're going to keep one of them, which is this horizontal black line. Um, I'm going to move this further down. And then with the direct selection tool, we want to press A, or you can click on this white cursor right here. And then you want to click and drag to select this middle point right here. Technically, these two lines are separate, not connected lines because we just duplicated the same line twice. They're not one line. So we're gonna select this middle point right here. We're gonna right click on it. We're gonna click join. And that basically makes them one line. But even though it's one line, there's still two points there. So let's press minus on our keyboard to get the remove anchor point tool. And then let's click once. And now we only have one point there. So now let's go back to the direct selection tool with A. And then let's drag this up fairly high. You can move it up however much you want. This will just determine how intense the curve is. OK, so let's now select the anchor point tool, which is shift C. Let's click on this middle point right here. Uh, let's hold the shift button on our keyboard and just drag it out like that. And let's do the same thing with this point right here. Let's remember how far we're dragging it out. So that it looks like it's three of the of these big blocks on the grid. And let's do the same thing over here. Three of these big blocks on the grid is where the handles fall. Now, I think I want to tweak this a little more. So with the direct selection tool, I'm just going to maybe bring this down a bit. I might want to increase the intensity of the curvature. So shift C to switch back to the anchor point tool. I might make this a little wider. And then I might make this one go to actually the fourth box. I'm going to do that the same thing over here. Now we have a curve that I decently like. So we're going to do the same thing that we did above with those straight lines. We're going to select this line. We're going to zoom in a little bit so we can see better. Option click and drag to make it come down here. And then we're going to change that to white. And then we're going to select both of them. We're going to option click and drag them down again. And then we're just going to press command D, which is repeat transform. Now we're bringing them all down. We're going to make a bunch of these guys. And there we go. Those are all the lines we need. Now for step four, we want to bring these lines into Photoshop. So what I'm going to do, select all of these curved lines, press command C or control C to copy it. We're going to bring it into Photoshop and then I'm going to Control or Command V. Paste it as a smart object. And then I'm just going to position it above this guy's face. It's going to be about like about here. I want to make sure his eyes aren't visible. I just want to cover most of his face and just leave the lower half. Press OK. And then I'm going to go back to Illustrator and I'm going to copy in these straight lines that we made. 
also as a smart object. And then I'm gonna bring them down under. Um, now I'm going to, in the layers panel, put this behind the portrait so that we're getting pretty close to the effect that we actually want. Now, these lines that are horizontal and the lines that are curved, they look a little different in width. So we're gonna adjust them a little bit. So I'm gonna select these curved lines, press Command or Control T to transform. And then while holding Alt, I'm gonna drag this out to resize it to what I feel like is about similar to the size of the horizontal lines. Um, I think we're getting pretty close there. And then I'm just gonna reposition it Make it look better. So there, now the composition is pretty much done. We just wanna add some finishing touches to help it feel even better. Now to the portrait itself, I think I wanna add some coloring to the face of this guy. So with this portrait layer selected, I'm gonna to go to adjustments. I'm gonna click curves. Now I'm gonna play with this curve a little bit to add some contrast, bring out some of the details. And then I'm gonna go back into adjustments and I'm gonna add a gradient map. We're gonna check dither. I'm gonna edit this gradient in the gradient editor. I'm gonna make this far left color something really dark. And then I'm gonna make the far right color something fairly light, but not white. Not quite white, I think I want it to be maybe in the orange area. And then I'm gonna come into the middle-ish area. And then I'm gonna make it a darker orange maybe, something like this, um, just to help it feel more vintage, more pop arty, if you will. And while we're at it, let's only apply these adjustment layers to the portrait. So you wanna hover your cursor between these two layers, hold Option or Alt, and then click, and then do the same for the one above it. And now it's only applying to the portrait. Let's go back into the gradient map and edit it a little bit more. I think I wanna drag this up some more so that it starts turning darker earlier. I'm gonna move these sliders around just to a place where you know I, I like it and I feel good about it. You can use your creative judgment here. All right, it's at a place where I think I like it. And then I'm just gonna come back into curves and tweak things a little bit. You could do whatever you want here. Just make the photo look how you like it. Your settings are gonna be different because your original photo is slightly different from mine, but use your best judgment. Now, I also wanna add some noise to this. I'm gonna make a new solid color layer. I'm gonna to go to adjustments, click on solid color. And I wanna make sure it's black. So now the whole canvas is filled with black. I'm gonna right click on that layer. I'm going to convert to smart object and then go to filter, pixelate, mesotint. Now this mesotint thing will pop up. I think I like fine dots, so I'm gonna click okay. And then I'm gonna change the blending mode of that new layer that I just created to soft light. And then I'm gonna decrease the opacity to maybe 50%. So now we got a decent amount of noise here, right? But to further bring things together, I'm gonna to add a drop shadow to this portrait. So clicking on this portrait layer, I'm gonna to go to FX, drop shadow, and then wanna make sure, basically these settings are the thing that I recommend the most, but um, I might increase the size a little bit and then increase the opacity or decrease. I'm gonna play around with this to see what you like. You could do whatever you want, but the key here also is I add some noise to the drop shadow itself. It helps it feel even more retro, vintage, old, worn out. Click OK, and I'm gonna add a drop shadow also to the curved lines that are on top of the face. So I'm gonna do the same thing, select that layer, FX drop shadow. This one is gonna be smaller in size and just wanna make sure not to overdo it. Click okay. And I might change the noise down to maybe 25, just decrease it a little bit. And that feels pretty good to me. So just keep playing around with it until you get somewhere you like. You could play around with the size of the face. You could play around with the positioning of the lines. You could play around with the size of the lines. And of course you can mess with the gradient map, change it to whatever color you like, whatever vibe you like. I'm gonna make mine a little more saturated and just drag this around a little bit just to, just to play around with it and, and see, what, see what's possible. You feels? And that's it, that's how you make this pop art portrait in Photoshop. If you wanna download the project file, it's in the description. If you wanna download the exact portrait that I used for this tutorial, you can do the same. Just check the description and everything's gonna be there for you. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you for watching. I'm planning to make more videos, so please subscribe, smash the like button, turn on the notification bell, and do not forget to watch my videos.